Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint a sea sun seascape sunset. That's a hard thing to say. Fast. <laughs> it's going to be a nice, colorful painting, and I'm going to show you how to do it step by step. I've got my husband, Mark, with me. Hey there, everybody. He's man in chat for our live show. We're back from vacation, so we're glad to be here. And uh, let's get started. Alrighty, so this is my reference photo. Really loved it. Um, I've got that from Shutterstock. I'll be using a pro uh, Belgian linen canvas today. This is a 9 by 12 inch size, but you could use whatever size you'd like. And I coated it with a, a coat of light orange, just a golden color called light orange. Really any kind of warm color. You could do a light pink, light yellow, just whatever color you've got. Um, it's just basically orange plus white. So... Um, not too difficult there, but I thought I'd give it a nice warm um, glow in the background for our upper layers. And it just kind of saves us a step um, of having to dry um, our canvas. So let's go over our colors really quick. I've got uh, quinacridone magenta, cadmium red light, quinacridone burnt orange, uh, Indian yellow hue, yellow. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. That's cadmium orange. This one's Indian yellow hue. Uh, cadmium yellow light, cadmium yellow medium, yellow oxide, phthalo green yellow shade, teal, phthalo blue green shade, ultramarine blue, doxazine purple, burnt sienna and burnt umber. This is titanium white, unbleached titanium, zinc white, and then these two are thalo, light phthalo blue and light ultramarine blue. That's just those two colors plus white. Um, and this one, teal, is thalo green and thalo blue plus white. So we're probably not going to use any, if all, of the green, but I put it out just to demonstrate that those two together make that color um, plus white. So use whatever colors you have. I know you might not have these exact ones, uh, but it won't, won't really matter. You just kind of want a rainbow of colors for our really colorful sky here. Um, and our brushes that we're going to use are going to be some basic brushes. We're just going to use like a large flat for some of the bigger areas in our background. This is a number 12 bright from Princeton. These are 6100 series in the green handles. I've got a number six filbert and a number four filbert for some of the clouds, uh, just to kind of base in some of the details. And then I'm going to probably switch over to, um, either one of these, uh, Deerfoot stiplers for some of the cloud details, or I might use my Willow's blenders. Um, for some of the tighter details, they're a little bit more like a filbert, uh, stiff bristled filbert brush. Um, if you don't have these, just use what you've got that you like to use for clouds. Just kind of any stiff bristled or uh, scruffy brush will work. And then I've got a couple fan brushes for some of the details down here in the water. Um, and then I've got my quarter inch and three eighths inch angle brushes also for some of the water effects. So, um, and if you don't have these exact brushes, um, don't worry, you know, just use what you've got. But if, if you want to see my brush guys list or my list of recommended brushes, it is at the brush guys and there's a link down in the description for them. So thank you to Princeton and to Frederick's, our canvas and brush sponsors. Yay. Hey, real quick. Yes. I'm going to mute your mic. There's okay. a little bit of static. Okay. I'm going to try to fix it. So there's a cord hitting up. Let me. All right, better. Got to see my uncombed hair oh, there. Oh, much better. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make a meme out of that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, so our horizon line is just about on the third. I'm going to go ahead and make it on the third on my canvas if I can kind of figure out where that is here. So just kind of gen generally kind of figure it out here. Split my canvas this way into thirds, and then I'm going to use a T-square because you want to make sure that your horizon line on um, any water is completely straight. I'm going to get a blue pencil here and just do a line across. 
so that I have a good straight line there on my horizon line. And uh, that's pretty much all I'm going to have to do except for just a little bit down in here. I'm going to want maybe like our sun is kind of right in here. It's just above the horizon right in here and right below it and to this side a little bit there is the start of our water line here, our beach area. It's going to do kind of a wavy line and it's going to come up to almost to that horizon line there. So if you want to kind of work your way back, you can do that. And just do kind of a wavy line that goes like that. I don't think you can see that at all. Sorry. You'll see it once we start painting. All right. So I'm going to set that aside and grab my large flat to start with. And since I've already got my um, orange in the background, the reason I chose orange is just because it was the predominant color in the undertones in most of the painting. Um, I could have also used pink. Um, but a warm color would probably what you want to choose. Like, so I almost chose pink for this. Um, I didn't choose yellow because of the beach area and the sky area. Um, uh, I saw a lot of peach in down in here, like the orangey colors. So I didn't see a lot of yellow here, even though it's like right in here. So there's a lot of orange all the way, um, almost covering the whole canvas. So that's why I chose that is my undertone, plus orange gives a painting a real vibrancy when you use it as an under, undertone color. And this painting is one that we want to be nice and vivid, so it's a good choice. All right, so I'm gonna grab, up, scoop up just some of this um, pre-mixed thalo blue plus white here. It's just light thalo blue. And I picked up a little bit more of my thalo blue. I'm gonna come up here in my corner and work it down and I'm going to make sure that I am I'm going to grab a little bit of glazing liquid too I didn't mention that I had that make sure that I am keeping these back end, ends of the this part kind of streaked here so that I don't have any harsh lines we're going to have all these clouds kind of coming in here too, but this will kind of give us a softer look to our clouds and give us more time to kind of blend other colors in there. So got it all figured out there, honey. Mm -hmm. Changed it again. Did it? Mm -hmm. I wonder if it was because the stream deck downloaded. Did I don't know, but it's frustrating. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Got audio issues here. Sorry, guys. Much better. Much better. Good. Okay, so I'm just adding a little bit of the glazing liquid to my brush here so that I can get. And you can see I started out with that dark color, but then as I get towards the um, sun, I'm kind of switching to the lighter blue. So I'll go ahead and do that and just kind of do a side sweep here. I don't really want the blue down in this area, so I don't want to come down that far. I want it to stop right about in here. Like so, this area right around my sun and just above it, um, I want to stop the blue and have warmer colors down in here. But this upper area here has got a lot of blue in it, so... The camera's trying to make sense of all that light colors. Oh, yeah. What's it doing? <laughs> it's just like, what is going on? I don't know what to focus on. Mm -hmm. But that's okay. It'll get better once we get some, some of our clouds in. Yep. So, hi, everybody. Can We're so happy us? to be back. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are. It was awesome being, seeing our little Liam, though. Yep. He was just as cute as we remembered. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe even cuter. He takes after his grandma. <laughs> oh, good. 
good answer. Him. <laughs> well, it's a fact. Grab some white here. And grab a little bit of my pink. I'm going to stick with this bigger brush here just for now. And I still have those blues on my brush, so it's kind of making a kind of a purpley color. I'm going to come in down here and add this pinkish purple color. Quinacridone magenta and white. And it's mixing just a little bit with this blue, so it's creating a soft purple. And if it's going on too dark, just add more white. I want it to be nice and soft. I'm going to add it a little bit over here, too. I'm not going to fill it in, though. I'm just going to kind of sweep it side to side. These clouds kind of do this this kind of widening thing. So the there's an arc to them right here. If you can see in the picture, they kind of do this U-shape thing. So they're kind of straight across right here, but then uh, it's like a fisheye lens almost. So that's what we're kind of trying to recreate when I'm putting on my brush strokes. You notice over here, I was kind of sweeping down this way. And then when I got to this side, I was doing the opposite and then just kind of sweeping in this U shape like this. So that's what I'm going to do here. And just, and the nice thing about having the background pre pre painted like this is that I don't have to worry about covering every little thing. And if you, I don't know if you can see it, but there's like little spots of this orangey glow coming through that's really pretty. Um, so it's already kind of doing part of the work for us, which is nice. And we don't have white showing through. You know, we have this really beautiful glowing color showing through our canvas. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just put down my ruler and use it as my guide here. I'll make this part really easy. I'm just gonna sweep it along that edge right there with this light pink color. And the thing with the clouds is just, or with the skies in general like this, you just kind of want to build them up slowly, your layers slowly, so you don't have to get it all right the first time. So don't, you know, if it's not looking too good right now, that's fine. We, we have lots of layers to go, so we have plenty of time to correct anything that uh, might, you know, might not look right right now. I'm going to make a light orange, or light yellow, I mean. Um, I mixed it with my pink to make a slightly orange color, but I'm going to add that. And I have a little bit of that blue left in my brush, so it's kind of turning a little orange, which I'm or green, so I'm not 100% happy with that, but I think it'll be okay for now. Just wanting to add a little bit more yellow color down here. And I can tell this is kind of starting to dry because it's wanting to lift when I'm messing with it. So I don't want to touch that up too much more. And I'm going to grab a little bit smaller brush. I'm going to get the number six filbert here. And grab my white and my cadmium yellow light here. And just add just a tiny bit of the yellow to my white. And I'm going to put in a really bright spot right in here where my yellow sun is. It's really white. And if you can get your clouds around it to be dark and then just have this bright spot of white, that's what makes it look like it's glowing. So we want it to be the only spot that's just pure like white. And that's what really draw your eye in and make it look very, very bright. So I want to cover up all that orange just in that one spot there. It'll probably take a couple coats, but we'll just start like that. That'll be good enough for now. And then I'm going to use a little bit of this with my yellow to add a little bit more yellow streaks. Just kind of sideways. Start to create my clouds. Start to kind of build up where those are going to be. Just a little bit. 
and they're going to be just above that pink layers that we put down there. So there's going to be this bright yellow right up underneath our sun. And then as it goes away from it, it's going to get a little paler, a little bit softer. And then up here, it's really vivid. I'm not going to do too much to it right now because I want it to set up and dry because that blue is not dry yet. So we'll just leave that as is for now. It looks good enough, I think. How are you doing, hon? I'm doing all righty. Hanging in there? Yep. I'm remembering how to do this. Back in your captain's chair there. Yeah. It's familiar. <laughs> like riding a bicycle. Sort of. We took a whole week off, didn't we? I guess it was a full week. Yeah, last show yeah. was more Thursday. than a week. Was more than a week. Was a Thursday, yeah. Mm -hmm. How about you? Did you remember how to paint? It's coming back to me. Okay. <laughs> you know, your colors. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to grab this pink that was the purple, purplish sky color here. That light blue and a little bit of quinacridone. So that's the yellow blue and quinacridone here. And white. I'm going to use it. In my beach here. I'm just going to tap the color in. So I don't have like a perfectly straight line there on my water. And then I'm going to just kind of brush off that edge. So it's just a little bit darker where it's hitting the water. And then there's not a, really any paint, uh, paint left in my brush here. So I'm just going to kind of Brush it out here. Can you tilt your painting up from the bottom a little bit? I'm just trying to see. There's just a little bit of a glare and I'm trying to... Like that? No, from the bottom. With the bottom up. I'm just trying to... No, that's not helping either. No. Okay. I think it's the orange color. It's messing with the camera probably. Mm -hmm. I think once we get it covered, it'll be better. It's kind of washing everything out right now. And we do have a question. Okay. Uh, they would like to know, is there a reason why Angela sometimes uses gloss glazing liquid and sometimes satin? Um, I just have satin right now. I don't, I don't have the gloss. Did I say gloss? I probably did. I don't know. I use both, but no. I mean, not really. They, they're pretty similar. Um, the satin is not as shiny, but... Uh, I just ordered some more and I got gloss. So I didn't realize I was using satin. So, <laughs> so no, there's not really any. Um, I don't think, you know, any major advantage to one or the over the other necessarily. Let me use a little bit of the ultramarine blue and I uh, got a little bit more of that. Halo blue. I'm just going to tap in just some dark little spots in my sand down there. Not really happy with those. Try that again. I think this brush is a little bit big. There we go. A little bit of the lighter color. We'll put a little bit of that darker color right up here. Okay, and then what was your base coat color again? 
It was light orange. It's a color called light orange from Golden. Light orange. Oh. And if you want to mix it, if you want the exact colors that um, it said it was pyrrole orange and um, bismuth yellow plus white. So. Okay, so we'll work on that sand some more. I'll just let that sit because it's trying to dry on me. What? So it looks like an Easter painting so far. Yeah, yeah. Yep, yeah, Smith Van Date yellow. I knew there was something in there that I was missing. And pyrrole orange is kind of a bright reddish orange. Here's another. That was the transparent. Here's the. It's similar to cadmium red light. So you could probably use cadmium red light and add a little bit of yellow to it to make a, a similar color if you want to get it exactly the same as mine. But Because that it really honestly doesn't matter. We're just kind of going for the glow underneath. So it can really be any kind of any kind of color that floats your boat. Just gonna grab some ultramarine blue, mix it with my quinacridone magenta here. And, whoop. <laughs> wow. That was interesting. Did you forget how to hold on to the brush? Yeah, I did. It just flipped right out of my hand. It like did a full somersault. Okay. I'm just trying to see what color it is that I'm seeing on the horizon line. Let me grab a little bit of the burnt sienna, a little bit of the phthalo blue. Ooh, that's a pretty color. That's yeah, good. Okay. So we got both my blues, a little bit of um, burnt sienna, and my quinacridone magenta. I think this is going to be the color I want. And I'm really not going to be able to use my ruler this time, so I'm just going to go for it and hope for the best here. Try to keep it straight. Go slowly, use the edge of my brush. And this dark color is really just kind of right along that edge there. And if I get this off. I can always kind of clean it up later, so don't worry too much about it right now. I'm just going to kind of do this back and forth motion here, so if any kind of brush strokes show, they'll just kind of look like waves. Can I see that? I'm kind of holding it in angles. It makes it a little bit easier to get that kind of straight edge off of my brush. I'm working from left to right in kind of that same natural direction that you would write in if you were holding a pen or pencil. I find that it's easier to paint that way when I'm trying to do straight lines at least. A little bit more natural feeling. Okay, so there we go. And let's just put in some kind of streaks down low here. And try to keep my brush strokes fairly horizontal until we get here. And really this is um, our vanishing points out this way, right? So um, it's going to, all of these are going to fairly, you know, line up pretty shallow. Um, with it. So there's not going to be a whole lot of angular waves here. They're all going to kind of point off over here. Does that make sense? Hopefully. I don't know. Sure. 
Well, I'm just saying don't don't do your waves like going in this direction because this mm. is not your vanishing point. It's not out here. It's over this way. Okay. So these are going to be very shallow. And they're going to point off. So even if these angle just slightly, they're, going, they're not going to angle that much. They're going to only angle out to this point out here. And then this... Just put a little bit darker there. Okay. Uh, you notice I kind of left a little bit of the orangey color in there too. What were you going to say? It looks like that you're hunting for treasure on a certain island. Oh, really? You're doing a little bit over here, a little bit over there. Yeah. Come back over here. Kind of like Oak Island. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. So you're entering the proverbial ugly stage. I am, especially on the this part down here. Kind of looks like a hot mess, but it's important to do it in all the different layers. Right. What color am I painting a hot mess just now? What? No. <laughs> all right. I've mixed some quinacridone magenta with white. And this is just pretty much straight up pink. Just gonna kind of go over the top of some of this darkness here, and really this whole area in here is going to be pretty light. So I don't know why I did that so dark down there, because that's really not very dark in there. Just lighten that up a little bit. This will soften that kind of darkness too. We'll go back in and add another layer of the dark, but this will just kind of soften everything up just a little bit. Okay, grab a little bit of that glazing liquid just to give me a little bit more time to work with this. I'm gonna add a little bit of a softer pink. Get a little bit more white. And I really kind of put the the dark part too low right there. Because this is all the reflection right in here. The wave isn't actually until back here. So I need to kind of cover that up a little bit. did that. <laughs> You're like, hmm. Hmm. It's messing with me now. Yep, sorry. <laughs> I forgot that your mom, so you pick up on everything. Yeah. I miss stuff like that. Yeah, like, don't keep playing with the baby when he's tired. <laughs> Dads have trouble with the non-verbal cues of baby babies. <laughs> Sometimes we were having a great time. That's all I know. <laughs> and then you until did a, the screaming started. And then you did an amazing job <laughs> at calming him down. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> you have that magic touch. Uh huh. I may or may not have got that look that I'm <laughs> very familiar with. <laughs> the 
look that was like five minutes ago. I told you he was getting tired. Yep. Mm-hmm. A, along with a, a sigh. <laughs> 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 that may or may not have happened. Okay. Just hypothetical. Guilty as charged. Just We're just going through some scenarios. <laughs> Adventures and grandparenting, babysitting. Here. <laughs> oh gosh, just gonna laugh at it. Oh yeah. Alrighty. So going in here with some yellow. Now this is the cadmium yellow light. I'm just kind of adding my reflections in my water, trying to figure out where those are gonna be here, and adding them to my beach area here too. A little bit of the cadmium yellow light. And I'm just using cadmium yellow light because it's just, you, it's, it's just, if you add white to cadmium yellow medium, you don't get cadmium yellow light. It's a totally different color. You really can't mix it. It's just a vibrant yellow. It's own little color here. It's got a lot of green tones in it. And it's just not really one that you can mix and get the same exact kind of feeling. So I could try, you know, mixing a little bit of the white with my cadmium yellow medium and get a color that's sort of the same value, but it will be more chalky and more, you can see here next to it, it'll be more chalky and more um, less intense of a color. So, so it's just sometimes it's just nice to have that bright cadmium yellow um, light color. So I'm going to add a little bit of it around my sun. Now that my sun, that white is dry. I'm going to get the glazing liquid just to make it kind of glow on easier. It'll kind of stick to the, it'll flow better. Our paint, our thick paint here will just kind of stick where we put it. And so this will kind of allow me to, the, the glazing liquid will just allow me to push it around a little bit easier on top of the other paint color. But I'm not putting, I'm not adding a lot, like I'm not wanting to to tone down the color or, or create a, a transparent glaze really. I'm just wanting to use it to sort of push my paint around right now. some more white here some yellow there's going to be all these dark clouds in here so I'm wanting to get this light yellow underneath them because it's peeking out here and there so I'm just doing that sweeping motion side to side and sort of tapping And then as I get up here, I'm going to kind of create these sort of legs, the zigzag back and forth. And those clouds, we're just seeing the underside of them glowing. And they go up about a third of the way. So this, this yellow kind of goes up to here and then everything above it is going to be blues and pinks. And this area right in here is really concentrated with these yellows and golds and oranges and things. So I'm just right now trying to kind of map out the general shapes in my clouds. Not filling in too much, just kind of tapping and do sorry general shapes here. And this filbert brush does a good job of this. Let's grab a little bit of orange. And I'm gonna mix it with my previous color, that light light. Cadmium yellow light with white. You can 
could see this is actually pretty close to our background color too. So this would work if you have cadmium orange. Just add some white to it, maybe a little bit of yellow. Just tapping in a little bit of this color. Add a little bit of my glazing liquid so that it smooths on a little bit easier. And I'm going just above the yellow that I just did. So if I've got, you know, like a layer here where there was a pocket um, of blue showing, I'm kind of going right above it with this color. So the brightest yellow is facing the sun here, and just above it is going to be this orangey color. Kind of in our, starting our shadow of our clouds. Over here is very light. Creating this bowl shape right here. See how that works. And really this area up here is more pink than orange, but I'm just going to use it to kind of try to draw in our basic cloud shapes here. Starting them. <coughs> Starting to define them a little bit. And there's an area over here that's really bright orange. Grabbing that glazing liquid to kind of soften those edges, blend them in a little bit. Okay. And then let's use this color in our water because our water is going to be just basically a reflection of all the colors we got going on in our sky. Yeah, and as Mark was saying earlier, this paint, this painting is going to be one that will probably look a little bit worse before it looks better. So just going to know that going in so that you don't panic and kind of give up too early. A lot of time the tendency is to <clears throat> have a picture in your mind of how it should look when it's finished. And so when you're halfway through the process, um, you kind of start judging your painting before it's actually finished you know you're kind of mentally going oh this is not right something's wrong about this when you're not you know when you're still have three or four layers left to go to get it to where you need it to be and you know it will eventually get there but for now it's it's we're just kind of laying the ground the foundation and that's you know it's not going to look quite right yet so let's grab the, you can see I'm kind of working my way 
to the brighter pink here. So I'm going to grab this quinacridone burnt orange here. Add some of that. This is going to be a good color for our water because it's kind of a pinkish orange. It's really pretty. But it's not super vibrant. It's kind of toned down, understated color. It's really pretty. And it's another one that you really can't mix um, the same kind of transparent quality of it. You can get something similar if you mix burnt sienna with, with quinacridone magenta. But it won't have the same glazing um, transparent transparency. And the transparency is what gives it that kind of glowing quality. Opaque colors tend to be sort of flat. Um, all right, so I'm kind of going on either side here, and I'm adding glazing liquid so that it is kind of transparent. It's picking up the, it's going on top of this light quinacridone that I have put in before, so it's kind of darkening that up just a little bit. Okay, there we go. Pretty. Let's use this up in the clouds. And if I used just water to glaze with this, it can underbind um, Water won't make the paint stick to the canvas, and these uh, heavy body acrylics, especially, are highly pigmented. So that means they have less fillers than the cheaper paints that, you know, like craft acrylics, you can add water to them all day and they're not going to underbind. You can, you know, that's why floating is such a popular technique with them. You can float and add water, you know, to, to them and, um, not worry at all about them not sticking to your canvas or, uh, you know, layers on top uh, lifting, that kind of thing. But if you're using the more expensive acrylics, they're going to have higher pigment load, load, which means less fillers, which means less binding. So you have to add a acrylic medium to get them to stick to the canvas if you're going to thin them out quite a bit, you know, with water. If you're using a lot of water, then use a little bit of glazing liquid or something like that to make them stick. Because what would happen is I could go in here and do that layer with just water, but then when I went to put my next layer on, what might happen would be the layer would underneath would lift off and start lifting and so I'd have gaps in my color and stuff. So, and I did. I had that happen to me once when I was trying to teach a. Um, I was used to using craft acrylics, and so I um, I wasn't as familiar with the heavy body acrylics. And I was teaching a class with, fortunately, with some of my friends. So <laughs> it was just for fun. But I, we were trying to paint a butterfly and do like a soft layering with the butterfly and the layers kept lifting on us and I was so frustrated and confused because I'd never really come across that before but it was because you know our we were using a higher quality paint we weren't using the craft acrylics we were using my I think that was Liquitex Basics at the time so we learned pretty quick not to do that <laughs> with the better acrylics and just use a little bit of glazing liquid and it fixed it right up. So we got a couple questions. Yeah. All right. First of all, they would like to know, okay, could you, I'll ask them in reverse order. Sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, what does floating mean? Floating is when you take your paint and you, um, you load your brush just on one side and Brush it out so that uh, 
you get a perfect ombre effect and it's used a lot in decorative painting so like if I wanted to go through and uh, add a dark shadow around the side of something Let's see if I can find something dark shadow around the side of the ball here I would do it with this floating and it creates this perfect like dark to light and I've used it before with certain paintings so you know it's that's the technique it's just the name of the technique of doing that um, and it's there's no paint on this end or well it looks like there is a little bit because it's kind of leaving a line there ideally if I did it right I would have no line here at the end it would just blend out to perfectly clear from dark to clear all along this backside here so okay anyhow I'm messing with it but I don't <laughs> get the idea got it's it. floating and then the other question was have you ever painted over an existing painting I have um, I've painted over one that was um, varnished um, to somebody uh, sent it back to me and wanted me to add another egg to my one of my nests one time and it was, you know, finished painting that had been varnished and everything. And I just added a little bit of my um, gloss medium um, to help it stick to but, but you the never, canvas. And then I varnished over it again. But you've never done it to say, no, oh, this is such an ugly painting. I'm going to paint over it. Um, I'm trying to think. I don't think so. I don't tend to do that. I, I just tend to sort of put them where I can't see them. If I don't like it, I don't tend to paint over them. I mean, every painting is a learning experience, you know, so even if you don't love it, I just, I don't know. It's just not something that I think to do, but probably would feel good to do it on a painting that's been really frustrating. <laughs> There's been paintings where I wished I had done that, probably, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like or I really wanted to. But I tend to be kind of stubborn, so I just could pretty much stick to it until I get it to where I want it to be. So instead, of, I don't tend to give up on paintings. I just tend to kind of keep working at them until I like them. All right, so now I'm going in with more solid color here and just adding some darker pockets of color here and let's do the same thing in the water here just add some and this brush is working pretty well for me so I'm just going to stick with it until I don't like it anymore that's pretty much kind of you know if you've got a brush that's kind of working and you know until I start to get kind of frustrated with it or you know try to do something that it won't do for me then I'll switch, but as long as it's still kind of seems to be doing okay, I'm just going to stick with it. So, going dark, and then I'm going doing another layer down here of the thinner paint just to kind of have a gradual dark to light. There, let's grab a little bit of my. Looks like I got a little bit of that cadmium red medium light here already. Now this is a opaque color. So I'm going to add a little glazing liquid. I'm just going to have to use it very sparingly. Because I'm, you know, it's going to cover up all my other layers. So I'm not going to be able to see through the, it as well as this. You can see how pretty that is. I don't know if you can tell how nicely that glazed. But that burnt orange over the top of the that blue really did a beautiful job of kind of adding sort of a luminous layer there so now we're going to use a little bit of this cadmium red light to just punch up that red just a few little areas here it doesn't have to be all over not going to use it as much quite as much and I'm not really seeing it much up in the clouds, so I'm going to save that for later and maybe add it later if I need it. 
for now. I'm pretty happy with that. I'll grab my cadmium yellow light. And I'm going to define my sun a little bit. So my sun's going to be right here. Go in with a really bright yellow. I'm using this full strength and it is opaque. So it is covering really well and it's going to really add a bright pop color to my clouds. That was my pop. <laughs> Sorry, I might no be comment. a little bored over here. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> to share at the end of the show. Got some more magnets for Mark's magnet wall over there. It's growing. He's almost covered one whole side of his his uh what is that called? Sound bore sound proofing booth. Soundproof booth back there where he sits. He used to have a box fort and I He took down my box took fort. Down his box fort and put in like real professional like uh, metal dividers. Whatever. I was expressing it's more my like a cubicle that he's in now. I was expressing my creativity through cardboard. I was so tired of looking at cardboard. <laughs> I was I was gonna do some street I art. I mean it was literally almost to the ceiling. I, I was gonna do street art on my cardboard. I was gonna be the next Banksy or uh -huh, whatever. whatever. And uh you had a whole year you, you, to get to it, and yeah, you didn't but, do it, so. I mean, I was just getting to that point. Uh, I don't think so. I was, you, you know, didn't have to look at it. You had foam in, on the inside of yours. I was the one looking at the cardboard. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> no comment. All right. I think I'm going to switch to my 3 8 inch Willow's Blender here, and I'm going to work on my water a little bit. So I want to make sure my paints are not getting dry, so I'm going to spray them with water. And I'm going to grab that teal. And I'm just going to go in here. That's a little bit bright, so I'm going to add a little bit of white to it. Maybe grab a little bit of this phthalo blue that's already kind of down. And I'm just going to kind of scrubbing side to side with this. So I'm adding but it's letting that kind of orange from the background kind of show through a little bit and I'm going in with some darker color here now let's just go ahead and use it up here too I'll probably add some purple to it up there to darken it up color here. This is that light phthalo blue. Adding highlights. Okay, and then I'm going to grab 
grab some of that quinacridone magenta. Mix that with it. I love the magenta with the teal. It looks it makes such a pretty color. It's like a so it's similar to the ultramarine blue actually. Or the ultramarine blue plus white. It's like a really pretty purpley color. It happens. Add some of that. Grab some white. Is that teal opaque? Yes, it is. Because it has white in it. If you used turquoise, it wouldn't be. Like thalo blue and thalo green by itself would not be. It's transparent, but but this has got white in it. Teal has white mixed in it. And I'm talking teal as in the color from golden, you know, called teal. It is thalo green blue shade and thalo blue green shade with white, which I use thalo blue or thalo green. Uh, yellow shade instead of the little green blue shade but it's close enough all right so now I just need to kind of transition between these two colors there is a section here use a little bit of that ultramarine blue there's a section right here that kind of goes from this wave and goes across. So it's slightly angled. And I could use my fan brush for this too. I was thinking I might use my fan brush for this. But so there I'm gonna go kind of across and I'm really kind of cutting this. Um, it's actually a little higher up here. Running across there, and then there's some other ones a little bit higher. Keep them really small, and then over here, this area's got a lot of the teal color in it. all up and along that shoreline. And let's go ahead and kind of define the wave now. So I'm going to grab a little bit of white, a little bit of my light ultramarine blue here, and it starts way back here white wave and this line is almost straight so this line here it kind of wavers but this line is almost straight And I'm just trying to kind of soften that back end up a little bit there. So it's not like a solid line. So I'm just sort of tapping to get it to be soft all the way down. Okay, and then I'm going to grab some of that quinacridone magenta. And some white. And I still have these blues on my brush, so it's kind of mixing it a little bit. I'm going to use a little bit of that. Tap in. Tap, tap, tap. Tap, tap. 
the old tapa tapa. Tapping tapping, yep. From our virtual friend, Chef John. Is that what he says? Well, yeah, he says, give it the old tapa tapa. <laughs> and he's banging uh. something down or something. Yeah. He doesn't know that we're friends. <laughs> but he. <laughs> <laughs> that tickles me. Sorry. <laughs> he, he, he hasn't said we're not friends. <laughs> so I just assume we are. <laughs> he seems like somebody you would be friends with, so. Exactly. I think he would probably like you, honey. Yeah. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> Doesn't know we're friends. <laughs> I don't know why that struck me. It's so funny. <laughs> Because it's kind of stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I know. But you, you, you've you grown to know that from me, so. <laughs> okay, so now I'm just kind of trying to define that shine that's in that. It's actually harder than I really thought it would be to kind of get it to look right, you know? Like, get that shiny part to look different from the wave part to look different from the beach uh we'll, we'll still work on it a little bit more obviously we're not quite there yet but uh yeah it's not it's not as straightforward as i thought it was going to be sometimes the simplest things are more challenging than you realize with painting it's funny so i think part of the problem right now is that we don't have any shadows uh, our wave is just kind of sitting on top of its light color on top of light color. So I think one thing that we can do right away to help give our wave more uh, oomph and give it more body, you know, uh, is to, I'm going to grab some quinacridone magenta here and I'm just going to go right up underneath it and just tap along that edge. And it, it does have a shadow in our picture, so I'm not making this up but we just don't have it in our picture yet so now obviously now we've got two layers right we can see okay this is different from this so that's making a little bit more sense to us okay good I'm gonna grab a little bit of the the little blue and teal here and like this area here has got like a little loop-de-loop -loop right there it kind of pushes back on itself it's a little bit darker and we're gonna put a little bit of the dark in our water too We can go through too and fix any lines in our water that we need to do, but I'm going to do that here in a minute. I'm still adding some dark, darker shadows to my water here. So this is that thalo blue. It's just got a little bit of the teal mixed in with it. Just putting in a little bit darker shadows. And these ones back there are purple, so let's get some purple. And I'm going to use my glazing liquid with that doxazine purple. Make that area more purple. 
And I see it over here too, so I'm going to add it over here too. the quinacridone magenta a little bit of white to that purple so it's kind of a violet color I'm gonna add it to our water down here seeing it in my water I'm seeing it up in here pulling down just a little bit on it when it gets to this wave part so I'm going from kind of doing more diagonal to sort of pulling down And just kind of using this to sort of unify the painting again. Just kind of scrubbing it in some of these different areas where I can see this kind of pinkish color happening. And now we've covered up all of that orange from our under layer. So it's finally kind of completely covered. Okay, so getting closer. So we need to add our shadow to this too. All right, so we had a shadow right here under our water. So we need a shadow on our beach as well. I'm gonna grab some more of that pink purple color. And I'm just gonna go up to where my water is. Got a question. Mm -hmm. If somebody hasn't done a large painting before. I'm scrubbing out that edge there to soften it up. Mm -hmm. Would this be a good subject to do on a large canvas for like a first timer? Yeah, I think so. I think it'd be easier probably to do it on a large canvas just because it's. Uh, it would take a while though. I mean, it's it's detailed enough that you know it would take a while you might do the version that I did that had the palette knife because I did I did this almost the exact same picture with a palette knife uh, a couple years ago I think it is now um, I need a link that, to that in my description I don't have it linked mm. right now but um, I'll take note of that yeah, link to in the i cards, the little i in the corner. I'll link it, link that old painting. Um, it, it was like two minutes. <laughs> it did not take very much time at all, because you know it was. It was. Uh, here I'm glazing the this color that I just did here. I'm glazing it up here in this 
part of the water that is the shine left over. And I'd recommend that if you do this on a larger canvas, you paint the whole canvas. Because if you just do one little 9 by 12 corner of it <laughs> and the rest blank, it would look kind of out of place. Probably, yeah. So um, just kind of like good advice. fill the whole canvas up. That's your advice? Yeah, I offer those pro art tips. Right. That's what kind of, you know, brings full body to our show. Right. If that's an art term, I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Back to your comment. Yes, it would work. It would be good. I think that the large flowers are also one that would be good for a large canvas. Cause, um, but, you know, anytime you're doing this, I would just say, you know, l level up on your brushes. So you want to do a larger brush to cover the bigger canvas. So whatever I'm using, just use a, you know, a little bit larger version. We'll grab some more of that pink or yellow here and add that in here. And our friend Mona put a link in the chat. Ah, uh, thank you, Mona. Hopefully awesome. it's the right painting. I didn't check, but... <laughs> I'm sure she knew exactly what I was talking about. Yep. Okay, once I'm with them white added with my yellow here, just to cover a little bit better. I'm kind of losing that brightness, so... And this reflection area here is just kind of these little side to side wavy. This brush is too big for it. on the sky a little bit let this all dry because I've done so many layers now it's just it's not gonna stick anymore so we'll go back up here and put in our dark blues that are in our clouds so I'm going to use the phthalo blue and the ultramarine blue and I'm going to add a little bit of the burnt umber just to make it look more black it's not black really it's really kind of a Prussian blue if I if I wanted to add another color to our list, I could have added Prussian blue because that's pretty much the color that's in this these clouds way back here. So, but adding the burnt umber to these blues will darken them up a little bit and I think we'll get close to what we want. So I'm glazing with this brush here. These colors are all transparent. I feel like I need a little bit. Let's add a little bit of purple. I feel like they're a little too green. There we go. I'm going to go right up to the edge of the clouds that I've already put in there. And I'm just going to try to soften these edges here. by kind of tapping them out as I put them on I can wipe my brush off and go back in here and 
sort of work that edge. If you've got a mop brush, you could use a mop brush to kind of do this. Just kind of trying to, there we go. I think I'll just kind of scrub them in. I think that that'll give me a little bit more control instead of trying to put them in dark and rubbing the edges off. Use a little bit more of the purple there. I mean, there are clouds all the way up in here. And then these ones do kind of these pointed, they're kind of pointed off. Almost like spokes coming up out. sure that I'm not doing a straight line there. Kind of got too much straight line here. And I can go back in with my phthalo blue, which is my undercolor, and kind of go along those edges and kind of soften them up too. See how that softens them, blends them out a little bit. I'm not trying to cover them. I'm just trying to kind of blend it, blend out those edges just a little bit. So which brush are you using right now? This is the three eighths inch Willows Blender. Okay. Use a little bit of the purple. soften up the color but it's a transparent white so I can get a soft purpley pink color without making it opaque with trans titanium white as titanium white would do it's be better because our purple is transparent our doxazine purple is transparent and so is quinacridone magenta and all these blues that we're using so if we use a opaque white to create a uh, uh, our lighter color clouds here it will it will not come out as soft be a little bit darker a little bit it'll cover more we don't want to cover necessarily we just want to add that kind of smoky light feeling that we get from clouds Keep on moving down here. I'm gonna grab some more white or some more glazing liquid. Some more of my purple and some more of my zinc white. Purple, 
Purple, Zinc White, Glazing Liquid. It's kind of our magic combination here. And we're going to create our purple clouds coming in here. And they're kind of skipping around, so I'm not putting them solid. I'm just kind of tapping in these lines. Put a little bit more of my blue in here. Just building this up slowly. And then you're going to drop the beat. <laughs> what do you mean by that? No, you said you're building it up slowly. Are you dubstep referencing me right now? <laughs> that reminds me of the <laughs> Deadpool comment. Yeah. Not a family no. movie to no, watch with young children. Uh-uh. Just scrubby scrub. Slowly building my layers up so I don't get like a solid color looking mass happening in my sky. I see some brighter, brighter blue popping out here and there though. So I'm going to get a little bit of my zinc white with my thalo blue light here and just pop in some bright Bright blue here and there. And the thalo blue has titanium white in it, so it's going to be opaque. So just be careful where you're putting it. There we go. I'm going to break up that darkness. I'm going to switch to a little bit smaller brush now, getting into the smaller areas of our cloud. So let's start by adding some golden highlights on our areas down here. So I've got the Indian yellow hue which is just a brighter orangey yellow. Grab some unbleached titanium here, and I just feel like this area needs to be lighter.
Get a little bit of white hair. Just add. So I add the color and then I wipe my brush off. And then I go back in and here and just smush it around. So it's put on fairly thickly and then I can kind of mush it around where I want it to go. And then I want to grab this purpley pink color and I'm going to try to put my shadow in this water again. I may just need a smaller brush. This brush just doesn't want to fit in this little area here. Going back in with that brighter color, just zigzagging over the top. Or not over the top, but over the sides, right? Really. Using some light ultramarine blue here, some white. Add it on my sand here. To your stomach. Growling? I don't think so. Oh. Maybe it was, I don't know. <laughs> I didn't feel anything. There was a noise. Is cashmere over there with you? No. Now I'm curious. Yeah, I know. All could, right. could you do that again, please? Burnt, burnt umber. No. No? Okay. Tapping in. Pink with the oh, the quinacridone magenta with this unbleached titanium can be a good color for our sand here. I'm gonna go over the top of that dark that I just added. So I added the blue in. With a light ultramarine blue plus white in. You know, just adding kind of highlights with this pink color. Oh. And I need to splatter.
splatters. Just a little bit. Oh my. <sighs> Tapping them off to soften them up a little bit. Just a little bit of splattery. Knack down a little bit of purpley blue there in my light, the unbleached titanium. The unbleached titanium is just a warm white, so it'll kind of make the pink a little bit more peachy, peachy color for our beach. Now I'm just gonna. And I've switched to an angle brush, the three inch angle. Get some of that darker color right along that edge. in some random stuff on the beach there. Grabbing a little bit of that blue. There's some blue shadows, like footsteps or something. Okay. I'm happier with that. I'm going to grab a little bit more of that. in a little bit of brown kind of rocks just with the tip of the brush here. Closer. We're not quite there we'll yet with the water there. I'm going to grab some white and a little bit of this pink color that I've got from the sand. And I'm going to use it. dragging it so it's gonna I'm, I'm going over the top of my shadow line a little bit deliberately too in places to create some depth Grab 
grab some of the light ultramarine blue for over here with my white. I'm just using the tip of my brush here to kind of dab in. over that shadow. All right, so now we're getting closer, right? I think it's getting much closer. I'm gonna do some lines, sort of. Use the tip of the brush and kind of create some little splashy, kind of foamy feeling stuff. Leaving some of that dark showing through. And this stuff comes all the way up to back here, so this line of sea foam. Goes all the way out there. And then I can use the use the brush and just set it down and kind of pull get just a little bit of that over wave feeling kind of you zoom in so they can see this part on only if you promise to go off camera I'll try okay okay that's good enough good enough <laughs> too close way too close yeah get in there all right so our wave roll kind of starts up here so I'm gonna just set down my brush and lightly flick it and it's going at an angle this way, kind of pulling down towards ourselves. This is coming almost straight at us. What? I just had to zoom out some so you can stay on camera. Okay. And this is not pure white, so it's, it's picking up all these other colors that we've got going on. And then as it comes down here, it's actually kind of getting dark because it's on the back side of our sunlight. We're getting shadows in it, so I'm going to grab a little bit of that teal color and do... So going just above where that white part is, there's a little bit of a shadow right here. So I'm going to put that in. And this is just teal blue with a little bit of the Go ahead and zoom back out. I can't stay on camera. Oh my god. Sorry guys. This is just teal blue with a little bit of the yellow blue mixed in. Get 
in that purple. Do some lines back here that are really dark. And they're not straight, so I'm just kind of tapping as I'm putting these on. You can use the tip of your brush if it helps. You keep them soft or, you know, not too solid. Okay. And then I want to do some more over here. As we get farther away, they're going to be smaller, closer together, tiny little lines. And then as we get farther down, now these ones are still pretty far away, so we're not getting much bigger. But they're going to be a little bit bigger. And then down here, these lines are... space much more farther apart and larger Grab a little bit of that green, that yellow green. I'm going to use it a little bit right in here. Okay, so just adding a little bit of this color. I probably could have done this before I did my white layer, but I'll have to go back in and do my white layer. I didn't notice until I did my white layer that I needed to have some darker color underneath first. So that wave needed a little bit of lighter color under there to give it some depth. Let's use a little bit of this color in here. All right. Now when we do our white over the top, we'll have more there. I also see some dark purples though, so I'm going to do that too. Do some more of that magenta pink color. And Just gonna darken up this corner here. It always kind of helps to sort of ground your painting to have it a little bit darker in the corners. Kind of pulls everything in, so just adding water to kind of thin that out and push it around a little bit. But there we go. this brush here with this 
pink and magenta color and add some shadows in my water. I'm trying to keep these in a straight line, but my brush is trying to <laughs> go all over the place here, so I may have to go back to my angle brush here. We'll see if I can get this to work. I like the news in the fan brush for this because it naturally gives you those kind of like dots and things that you see in the water. They're not a solid line usually, they're kind of broken up. Grab a little bit of that white, mix that with that color that we've got there. I'm going to use it a little bit in my water. splash line. Yeah, this is okay. So getting closer now, having that darker color underneath is going to help this a lot. So now when we put this color on, we're going to see through that dark underneath. It'll look like there's something going on under our waves. Won't be so flat. What are you laughing at? Someone put vroom vroom. <laughs> Love the neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> they always seem to come through on Saturdays, don't they? Yeah. They didn't make a comment when I drove by in my Prius, though. <laughs> yeah, but you weren't doing it during the show. They might have a few. How do they know? They would have never known. <laughs> That's true, because it's so silent. <laughs> Very true. All right, I'm going to dip my brushes back in before they dry out so that I haven't gotten to clean them yet. And we need to work on our sky some more. So let's grab this brush. This is the one. So we're getting closer to this. I want to let this dry because I've got lots of layers happening in it. I don't want to mess with it anymore right now. I'm going to get some more of this cadmium yellow light. Tap over. Some of these areas here. amazing what happens while you're painting. What do you mean? Oh, in chat. 
completely unrelated to you painting. Oh, yeah. Mona had made a comment about the weather. Mm -hmm. She had a strong gust of wind. I forget how she put it. And uh, I said, oh, that sounds like Mona starting a novel. Let me see if I can find it here. Using all my yellows here. She said, my goodness, what a stormy wind we got suddenly. So now it's it's evolved its way into people are wanting to send pictures for an Adventures of Stickman book to us. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sounds like you had to be there. And I was. I know. Just saying I missed it. So it's funny to me, sorry. (laughs) (laughs) I decided to bring this back up here a little bit. Push that wave back up a little bit. There we go. Getting closer. So this is the Indian yellow mixed with the quinacridone burnt orange there. To grab some of the cadmium or the mm, magenta. Tapping in some of the oranges back and forth here. I'm going with the quinacridone, some zinc white, and uh, I think it had some of the cadmium yellow light on it too. And I'm going to highlight over here on our water. I'm going to add some white. So cover is good. Okay. Add some light highlights just above where some of those shadows are. So this tutorial is fitting to be the first one coming back from our vacation. Why? Like I said in the Facebook group, it's like the sun is setting on our vacation. <laughs> Goodbye vacation. Bye it's bye. Knowing you. We had so much fun. We did. Don't get back to work now. You worked during the vacation.
vacation, though. You got kept getting calls and stuff. Yeah, I did. I did, too, so I was answering questions and things. Can't turn it off completely. I tried. I know. <clears throat> that just means I'm not doing a good enough job at work. <clears throat> they can't go a week without me. <laughs> So here's an interesting question. <laughs> it says, uh, love it, Angela and Mark. You're so fun together. Do you guys ever have to do a show when you aren't in such a good mood with each other? Oh, <laughs> yeah. We have. I'm trying to remember. There was one. It was pretty obvious. I was pretty ticked <laughs> with you. I think you had messed it up at the beginning or something had happened. I can't remember what happened. Probably. Oh, I'm sure it all begins with me messing up somehow. <laughs> <laughs> That's usually how it goes. Yeah, pretty much. Because everybody knows I never mess up, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not. <laughs> or just never mentions it when I mess up like I do. He just rolls with it. Got real quiet all of a sudden. Self preservation. Yep. Yeah, what show was that? I can't remember. It might have been the. There was one that I started and stopped, and then you had to re redo it. Like yeah. it, I started I started the stream and then I stopped it accidentally. So you had to put a new stream key out. Mm-hmm. I do remember that. Ooh. The sound of that. Mm-hmm. I don't remember what show it was. I don't stay mad about stuff like that that off that long though. We actually really do get along fairly well <laughs> for the most part. Now that may change when you retire and start helping me full time. We never get away from each other. Right now we don't see each other enough to miss each other, you know, or to, to be tired of seeing each other. Yeah, it's like that birthday card you got me a couple of years ago. You said, I'm still not sick of you. Right. <laughs> still not sick of you yet. <laughs> it says cadmium, you know. So I just kind of went through and softened everything. I just felt like this, some of the shadows were getting a little harsh, so I just kind of went over it with that soft pink color. And now I'm kind of putting back in some of these brighter spots. I didn't really like what the fan brush did. My fan brush was just a little too out there, so it was... I'm not really sure why there's three reflections for the sun, but it's just what I'm seeing, so I'm doing it. There's probably a reason, scientifically. This is what the reflections are doing. Okay, so it's more white. I'm doing really bright white right there. Doing that light pink around it, or light yellow around it. Okay, and then I'm going to start working on our purple inner clouds. So you're gonna have to zoom out because that's I'm gonna be working over here. Oh, I'm zooming out. Okay, thanks. I just wanted to get a good close up of that sun. It's All amazing right. how bright that looks. Right. And it's it, yeah. just paint. Right. It's a, it's, it looks like it's lighting up. Mm-hmm. I know, it's pretty fun. It's magical. Alright, so using some glazing liquid with, I mix the quinacridone and the purple, kind of almost 50-50 here. And I'm going to wipe a lot of it off and I'm just going to use it with this glazing liquid. 
Let's push it around in our clouds here. I've got the quarter inch stippler here, so it's got a little bit more control. I've got bright quinacridone here in my brush now. Use that zinc white with that pink. All up through here. So I'm going to start a little darker than I need it to be. So it'll have a little bit of contrast when I put that lightest tone on. And I'm going kind of over where I did some of the blue and the purple from earlier. And then I'm going to grab that bright white. And I have a little bit of that pink in my brush. And I'm just kind of flicking. So, getting kind of softed, it, rounded edges. And this is zinc white here. You could use titanium white if you need to. Use a little glazing liquid. It'll be a little bit more um, solid than this, but it'll still work. Pretty that is. scheming over here. Are you thinking what? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm just thinking how I'm going to use the power of Liam to uh, create a box fort. Oh, Lordy. <coughs> you trying to get your box fort back over there? Just saying, how can Grandma say no to, mm -hmm. to Liam for a box fort? As long as it's not in my studio, I don't care. color again here. This is ultramine blue here. See some really dark contrast in our clouds. This is what gives us that drama. Okay, so let's start building up these clouds that are down here too. These are really dark. 
So I'm using that quinacridone in purple, and I don't really have any white added to it, but I do, I do have a little glazing liquid in it, so it's a little bit transparent. And the bottoms are kind of solid, but then the tops sort of sort of crown. And there's little bits of yellow peeking through places, so. Down low, go really light with it, like really transparent. Just a little dabby clouds, not quite to the horizon line. And then as we go up, they get a little bit darker. You can use the quinacridone. This isn't quite. So these ones here by the yellow are a lot lighter than these ones down here. And we're going to put some yellow on top of them. So and there's clouds kind of connecting up from top. Some of that pinky color in these clouds too. And if you just got pink, uh, paid by the tab, tab by the tab, tab. <laughs> we'd be billionaires. <laughs> tap, 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 tap. Tap, tap, tap. <clears throat> tap. Going in here with some of that yellow blue, the light yellow blue, softening up those edges of that blue that I put in earlier.
We got a question. Mm-hmm. They would like to know: Are you going to add more darker colors along the horizon line, like in the reference picture? Along here. Along like the water line. Yeah, um. The yeah, probably. I'll probably darken it up just a little bit more. doesn't have to be exactly in like in the picture I mean really clouds are kind of fun because you you know as long as you kind of keep with a basic um, basic formula you can kind of go you know go to town and do your own thing and you know the basic uh, it's just that these ones down here low are going to be smaller and kind of flatter bottomed and then as you get up toward the top you're going to see more of the underside of them so they'll be a little bit rounder and uh, larger so although these ones aren't super large in the in the upper areas here we're still they're still fairly small but sometimes uh, certain clouds you know you'll see these these clouds are sort of thin and spread out but some clouds you'll see these massive no clouds, but they'll be at the top here. And they're not going to reach down this way because all of these down here are going to be farther away. So they're going to be smaller. top and the bottom of the, sh the canvas are closest to you and this is the farthest away so as you get closer to the horizon here things are getting smaller and then as they go away they get bigger so we can do our clouds we could do you know really big ones up in here that are up toward the top and then get smaller as we go down and it doesn't really matter what size or shape or Whatever we do, as long as we kind of keep that in mind, we're going to be okay. They're clouds, so you can kind of have fun with it. And just, I mean, I like this this painting, though. You know, it has that kind of, uh, like I said, fisheye effect. Where these clouds are getting, going out in kind of a spoke fashion, so... I would still keep to that, but you don't have to keep the, you know, do them exactly, exactly the same as on the reference photo. You know, as long as we get them basically in the same spot, basically the right size, basically the right, you know, values and things, then we're fine. You know, you don't have to feel like you have to go in here and like do it exactly like the reference photo because that could take a long time. I'm speaking to myself right now because that's what I've been doing. So, I'm just trying to speed things up here. <laughs> we got plenty of time till dinner time. <laughs> well, we're getting close there. It's starting to come together. Mm -hmm. Starting to look like clouds, like we want it to. Starting to get out of that ugly stage and become more realistic glazing liquid here and I'm going to put out some more zinc white I'm going to use the liquid zinc white it'll just be easier to smush around and get ultramarine blue here my glazing liquid. Put that 
under here. blue just so ultramarine blue has got a little bit more purpley tone to it than the phthalo blue that we used for our sky so it'll be a good contrast here kind of matches our pink in our clouds and stuff <coughs> excuse me <coughs> over here. Use a little bit of this purpley color. Quinacridone and zinc white here. See, and if you don't have the zinc white, what you can do is to go in with your titanium white first and do your titanium white spots where you want this bright pink to be and then go back over it with your quinacridone magenta later with the glaze spots. So.
that's what I'm doing here with this. I'm just having these white areas, I think places where I want to go back in with my brighter pink and yellow later. And using the titanium white, I'll just be a little bit more opaque so it'll cover over these darker colors that I've got on here right now. So this is that quinacridone magenta with the zinc white here. Adding the bright pops of color. Try not to cover up all my yellow, but I'll, I'll have to go back in with brighter yellow here because I'm adding so much of these other colors over, over it. Let's grab a little bit of it right now. We can blend. How you doing, hon? I'm standing up, stretching. Yeah, I just got a cramp in my leg. Oh no. It's <laughs> <laughs> funny. Maybe to you it is. <laughs> <laughs> You're being awfully quiet. I was like, why isn't he talking? You're like, ow. I'm in pain. Don't, I, don't mind me. You don't want to say owie, 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 owie. <laughs> okay, I understand now. <laughs> okay. Tapping off over my clouds here, just to soften them up a little bit. Blend them in.
There's just a lot of little layers, these. Do a little bit of purple and white here. Just defining some of my brightest areas here. They kind of got lost in the mix of all these colors. Then I'll go back over them. Okay, almost there. Okay, so just defining some of these darker areas here. Whoops, scrap the paint off.
blue, just kind of adding more blues in our dark blue areas. Ultramarine. Sorry, I whispered that. Ultramarine. You? I don't know that you have a whispered. <laughs> they can tell you're in the zone. Yeah. When I start whispering, that's pretty much mm -hmm. <laughs> sure sign. Alright, so I'm going to, before I do anything else, just go through here. And we did a pretty good job on that. Looks pretty straight. Looks all right. Just go ahead and horizon line there. Go in here and darken up the bottoms of some of these clouds a little bit more. You may not have to do this, just depends on what your painting looks like. So at this point, you know, you may decide you've done it right the first time and don't have to add anything to it. Um, you know, I'm just seeing things where I need to adjust my values here and there or, you know, add something. So you just have to kind of look at your own painting and see where you think you might need, you know, you may need to darken up certain areas or whatever. Now's the time to do it. <coughs> I'm going to let that set and I'm going to work some more on this foreground. Area here. Still feel like it's not quite there. I want to work on that wave a little bit more. So getting some white here. Let's get a little bit of that ultramarine blue. start kind of a little bit on the darker side. some quinacridone here with the zinc white. I'm going to go over this. Give it kind of a transparent shimmer.
a little bit of white or a little bit of yellow with that white. Kind of dry brushing here. Okay, so getting kind of more of a reflective feel here, which I like. Let's get some glazing liquid here now. I've still got that white on there. I'm getting some of that burnt orange. You may not have to do this. You may have done it right the first time, so if you don't need to. Then just, if you're happy with your, this area, just leave it alone. I just wanted to, I felt like it was dark, too dark back here. And so I'm just working to kind of work it back to where I want it to be. A little bit more quinacridone magenta here. And I'm going to use these colors in here in my water too, because... This water line kind of got messed up when we did our first time around. So I'm going to add a little bit of this color that's in the reflection up into the water. And we will fix it here in a minute. Okay. Bit of that orange. Okay, add me yellow medium. much better. Okay, a little bit of the cadmium yellow light, really bright pop of it. Let's get a little tiny bit of white to help it make make it a little bit more opaque, but there we go. Okay. Finally. And then I want to go right along that water line. And it's kind of a blurry edge. So I'm just going to take this, with some glazing liquid, and just kind of go over the top of that edge right there. Just slightly blur it out if I can. Maybe get a little bit more white.
purpley blue color that was my shadow on the beach. Do the same thing with it. A little bit of glazing liquid and just kind of go over that line there and buff it out. That's kind of soft and blendy. Ultramarine blue. That could be the name of your art book. What? Soft and Blendy. <laughs> Soft and Blendy. I like it. Get more zinc white out here. some highlights to these clouds. some purple here and just kind of going back and forth between the purple and the softer magenta. It's really purple magenta and this unbleached titanium mixed together. Just trying to add a little bit of softness to these clouds here. Hey, we got a question. Mm -hmm. They would like to know. Can you red light here? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just changed colors. You, you didn't. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, how do you decide what undercolor should be used? Um, it depends on on the painting, um, but a lot of times I'll just pick like with this one. I picked a color that was kind of the predominant undertone for all of the other colors. So there's a lot of orange in it, orange in all the other colors. So that's why I chose orange. But um, like a warmer color, a lot of artists, you know, will always use a warm color for an undertone because it always kind of gives your painting the f sort of a glowing feel. I like yellow oxide as an undertone a lot of times. That was a color that the... Um, canvases came toned like the, a lot of the masters um Rembrandt and you know those kind of um guys um used toned canvases that were undertone in warm yellows ochres that kind of thing um so yeah those those colors just generally look really good underneath um other colors for paintings you know as an undertone. Um, oh, goodness. 
But, um, you know, sometimes I use other colors, though. You know, I don't always use yellow. So it just, if, you know, if there's a painting that, uh, or something that would clash with the yellow, you know, I might not use it. I might use, I'm trying to think of a painting that I used a different color besides yellow underneath. I know there have been, well, like some of my underwater paintings, you know, where I'm doing blue, like sometimes I'll do a teal or something like that. But starting with kind of a mid-tone color is always usually good. So, I mean, unless I'm, um, I don't know. There's so many different ways of doing it. Um, I keep trying to make a generalization and then I come think of other ways that reasons why not. You know, sometimes I really like a black canvas and working from a black canvas or dark, dark color to light. Um, if I want the background to stay really dark and dramatic, you know, or if I'm doing like dry brush techniques on top of the black, um, you know, I'll, I'll start with a really dark black or, you know, color like that. But for the most part, you know, if you're using, if you're doing like a landscape or something that you're going to have like all mid, you know, mid ranges and you're not doing like super drama, um, starting with a mid, mid tone color, is really helpful because then you've already got kind of a starting point. You've got your kind of mid mid level values on your canvas already. The colors may not be quite right, but you know that's pretty easily to easily changed. Um, and then all you have to have, you know add is your light, your dramatic brights and and darks. Um, so, all right. So now I'm going back in with this yellow, and I'm gonna these areas that I did white before remember when I kind of went back in and added some of that white well, now I'm going to cover them up with this yellow this is got a little bit of white added to it but not much and I went in with the red and you know brightened up some of these red areas in here I'm just going to put in my last little bit of really bright yellow And these are all kind of broken up in these clouds here. So I can tap to get that kind of fluffy feeling with my brush over these dark areas and I'll kind of create those little pockets of cloud. And I'm kind of going right up underneath, kind of like I did before, going underneath those dark areas with this color. I'm going to use some of this reddish color here on this one. Down magenta and white here. Do some of these clouds over here. Highlights. And it's picked up some of the yellow, so it's kind of a coral color, which is really pretty.
really bright areas in my water there. Going over the top of this area right here with the yellow. Making those clouds kind of glow. And I'm going to grab some white. I'm going to turn my brush. Actually, I probably get a little zinc white there too. Turn my brush to the side and do some little. Sunburst. The thing with the sunburst you have to do is make sure that you're starting in your brightest area and you don't stop your swing. <laughs> like, don't, um, so I didn't, like, I wouldn't want to start my. Um, my white, my starburst, yeah, my neighbor, in an area that wasn't bright white because then you're going to have a starting line right there, right? You're going to end up with this weird halo looking thing, uh, not in Kazuman. Right. So I've seen some where the you've got a, a sun area right here, but they start the the rays down here. And it looks like a, you know, odd, a little off. So you want to start your rays in the white and pull out from that so that you don't have like this cartoon-ish effect of this halo of color around it. And then the other thing you want to make sure you're doing is pulling from the outside in or, you know, outside out like this and don't stop your swing because you'll end up with a blunt edge. So just set it down and flick. And then you'll get that kind of soft, broken up edge and not have, and then you really can't do it this way either because you're going to get a big wide, your your darkest area on your brush is going to, your, your thickest paint is going to be wherever you start it. So you want to start it in your brightest area and just flick outward and do it quickly. And just, you know, keep them layered. Like if you use a little glazing liquid, or zinc white you can do it multiple times in the same area and then just keep adding more until it looks where you want it to look it's better to go soft at first than to go you know super heavy dark and then it won't look quite realistic so um those are some things just to when you're doing this this part right here just to keep in mind you know kind of Take, they're really not that hard, but you just have to take your time. I think people rush it or, you know, they end up um, putting it on too thick too soon or just too heavy of a hand, you know, and you end up with a little bit too. And I probably didn't even need to do that second, second thing there of it, but. Just adding glazing liquid there to kind of soften it up. There you go. Okay. And really, you're not seeing it on the horizon line, so I'm going to darken up this area just a little bit. You're seeing a little bit, but it's not... Okay. 
All right, let's finish the pink part of the clouds. I need to put more of our bright pink in their clouds. Get that zinc or the titanium white here. My magenta. You can zoom back out now, hon. Almost white, but not quite. I probably could have done this easier. I don't know. There's probably an easier way of doing this, but I just find that it looks better to me when I just take my time and do these layers slowly. You know, there might be a faster way of doing it, but... Then it ain't as good. Well, it's just, you know, it's different. So this is my... It's your this way. Is my way of doing it. You may find it's easier to do it a different way. Do you want me to sing that song great. for you? I do it my way. <laughs> Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I could sing it. That's no, all right. Right now. It's all right. I'm good. Thank you. I know how much you love it when I sing. <laughs> so low. So low that you can't hear me. <laughs> That's good. That's good, honey. Thanks. I like it. Truth. <laughs> Truth. I didn't realize Mark couldn't sing until I tried. We tried singing together once and it didn't go well. <laughs> <laughs> so I couldn't hear the right key because he was singing so loudly off key. So I had to stop. I'm like, really? <laughs> yes. M many, many years ago, I was <laughs> trying to learn how to play guitar, which yeah. I stopped because it was just too hard. <laughs> but anyways, in one of the morning uh, men's uh, prayer things at church, the person who normally does worship 
wasn't there. So I was like, well, I can play like three chords so I can play it. And they're like, well, sing too. And I'm like, no, you don't want me to. No, no, no. You know, they're, they're doing the nice Christian thing. Yeah. I was never asked again. <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah. Yeah. It was definitely not a joyful noise. <laughs> I know my limits. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Jesus loved it. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. He, he may was have, trying to chuckle. He was probably laughing, too. He with, may have with had you. earplugs in or something. <laughs> 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 Alrighty, so getting there here, almost. Let's do our water and see how we do. I may be done, I don't know. I feel like I could work on this guy for another hour and still not have it exactly the way I want it, but it's just one of those things. You keep seeing things the more you paint on it. So I'm gonna get some of this pink here that I was using up in my clouds. I'm gonna add a little bit of glazing liquid just because it's getting sticky. And let's do our little wave thing and I probably I might need to switch back to my I can't remember what brush I was using before oh I think I was using my my um angle brush Does so. so I'm just gonna go along that edge and just kind of smush, just tap slightly. I have that dark edge still there, so I don't have to put that back in. Smushy smush. You don't want it too bright because it's it's pretty dark back here, so we're just not getting a lot of sun light. Everything's kind of got that golden. So you don't want to go in with a bright white here, so it would just not look right. Light ultramarine blue here. Use some of that white. Yeah, that's pretty. to my pink here. Let's get some little unbleached titanium, maybe some zinc white. I'm going to go along here and just add a little highlight. This brush is not doing it good for me. I'm going to get this brush. Quinacridone orange. A little bit of this unbleached titanium.
Ones working out that edge there. There's a lot of this orangey pink coral color down here low. How you doing, hon? I'm doing just great. Two hour, three hours? Three hours? Two Ugh. Sorry. That's okay. It's not bothering me none. Okay. So if I hear you yawning now, it's about time to stop this train. No, my yawn isn't because it's been three hours. <laughs> okay. You're still two hours short of your record, so. That's true. Using zinc white here, it's a little bit more transparent. Give it a little bit softer look here. Yeah, just kind of mushing up that shoreline there. Adding a little line of splash. Tail back in here. The main thing I'm trying to avoid is just too much repetitive, you know. You don't want it to look too perfect, perfect all the way down. So just trying to kind of make it look random. Because there's these, it's not the solid color all the way down. It's got these, you know, dark areas that are kind of breaking it up. So I'm kind of trying to get that feeling without... That's pretty close, I think. when I put in my yellow clouds. So I'm going to go back in with this quinacridone magenta and just with this angle brush just put in just a few like dark areas in here.
glaze over some of these areas with darker color if you need to. Glaze in some color down there, and I might even go in with some bright phthalo blue. some white to it there and just add back in my little pockets of blue if I need to you know some of them have kind of disappeared on me so That I could I could probably play with this for another couple hours here just messing with it but I'm pretty happy with it I'm not falling for that yeah no I'm, I'm done I'm just gonna stop I might do just a little bit more right there but that's it mm-hmm sure We're glad to be back. Hope you guys enjoyed yes, it. We are. Let me back on Tuesday. I think we're doing the daffodil for this month. Month of March was our daffodil uh, flower of the month series. So we're doing a daffodil. Just adding little highlights to with yellow. Get my water down here. So yeah, that'll be fun. It'll be our third, third month, third flower, obviously. I don't know what I'm saying. I'm thinking. Hard thoughts. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. I'll sign it. So, <laughs> people are glad that you're back. Yay. As usual, lots of great chats. Only some... Or super. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the first awesome. one was from Maureen, and she says, "Happy Aww. birthday, Angela!" Oh, nice, thank you. <laughs> nice to have you and Mark back from vacation. So, thank you, thank Maureen. you Maureen. And then we have one from Laura. No special message, but uh, I think she was just really enjoying you being back. Also, oh, thank you, Laura. Then we had one from Sandy. And she says, this is for the Stickman Novel Fund. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a cardboard back. I miss the cardboard back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and cardboard back. Huh? then we have one uh, from Darlene. She says, for Angela's beautiful painting in the uh -huh. Stickman and Angela Novel Fund. <laughs> oh, gosh, <laughs> Love you that's both. Awesome. Okay, I obviously missed out that whole... <laughs> Discussion there. And I've got yellow here. I'm just putting on. And then the last one's from Gwen. No special message, but uh, I think it was just support of the awesomeness that was unfolding before her eyes. Oh. So thank you so much, and Gwen, and Darlene, and Sandy. Yes. And, and Maureen. 
and Laura and everybody for joining us, welcoming us back from our vacation. Yeah, that's awesome. It's nice to feel missed. <laughs> <laughs> our cat missed us. <laughs> She's been so clingy. It's amazing. Yeah. Is she in here with you? No, she's she's, she's with, Spencer. with Spencer. Yeah, yeah. it's like she's oh, not letting us out sorry. of her sight. I forgot to turn off the lights here. Thank you. Just really excited. The <laughs> lights are back on. <laughs> <laughs> Just adding some of that darker color there into my water since I kind of got rid of all of it. All right, and, I'm gonna and don't on. forget to show the magnets. That oh, you yes, promised yes, yes. at the beginning okay. of the video. Yes, I did. But right. first, she has to put mm -hmm. down the paintbrush to do that, but she seems not to be able to put down the paintbrush. Can't do it. Can't do it. I'm right. done. No, I'm really done. <laughs> Shut up. No, stop, stop. Don't, okay. don't, don't All right. stop. All right, I'm don't, done. Don't I'm stop. Done for real. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this one was really awesome from Lori Gestaldo. From Flagstaff, Arizona, which is in our old neck of the woods there. And my new my new daughter in law is from Flagstaff too, so there. Isn't that beautiful? Mm -hmm. She hand painted that. It's on a piece of wood, I think. It's handmade. And then this one is another one from Patty Nabosny. She sent two other one tank ones. So nice. she found another tank one to send you. Yeah. Which is awesome. Winner winner. <laughs> <laughs> For Mark's tank wall, and then this one came from my friend Chris Howe, who uh, <laughs> no longer lives here. We used to have coffee once a month at least, well, sometimes more. You would go and talk with her, she'd have coffee, she'd have coffee, I would have tea. <laughs> and uh, we had a whole group of our friends called the Peeps that we would hang out together, and we still hang out, but without Chris, she's she was hilarious, so we miss her. And she sent me this for my birthday, so I loved it. It's a finger puppet, but it's got a magnet in his head, so we're sticking it on Mark's magnet wall. So <laughs> thank you to everybody who sent us magnets this month, yay, and keep sending those if you want to send those and more. We're trying to cover up uh, Mark's um, metal screen thing, sound screen, sound screen yeah. Yeah. with our magnets from all over the world. So mm -hmm. send us one from over wherever you're from, and we will put it on air. We'll stick it on Mark's thing, and we're, yep. we take pictures of them, and we put them on our Facebook group, too. So, Yeah, down below the video, there's the links to the or P.O. Box address and all that yes. stuff. So yeah, where you can send them. And then magnets. also, let's talk about, oops, wrong button. Let's try that button. Uh -huh. Oh, Patreon, yeah. yes. Yeah, I'll have a traceable for this and the reference photos available on Patreon. Um, the $5 level gets the reference photos of the, the high-resolution photo of this and the... Um, uh, original um, image, and then the and they also get a bonus video. And but the one dollar level gets a traceable that they can use trace mm -hmm. image, and, and it's all the traceables, not just this one. Right, exactly, all the traceables for one dollar. It's a pretty good deal. Yeah. And we may it may end up going up to two dollars later on this year, but it. The ones that are still at a dollar won't it won't go up for we'll them. There, so right. if you are thinking about doing traceables, you may want to do it. I, it's not going to be this month, so it's not like do it today. But anyhow, and then ten dollar level is all that plus access to a special Facebook group. Right, and we we're do gonna, more Thursday. We're going to finish this, which is our painting we work on uh, on Thursdays. We work on an image all month long in the Facebook group for patrons. Is your still life over the there? The $10 people. And you can see we're going to be adding little mices to our nice. to our flowers. So, what? Is the still life painting right there? Yes. That you is. did? The record, Oops. the record Oops. setter? That was our Patreon. Yeah, that was our $5 level Patreon. $5 and $10 oh, level. Oh, it's an image this month. So... And we'll do another one in April. Nearly. We do one every month, and it's usually a really long one. Yeah, it was nearly five hours. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it was. It was but it was worth it. I think it turned out really good. Oh, heck I yeah. I like it. And the, the nice thing about it is that the people that have been painting it have been 
turning in really beautiful oh, work. I mean, yeah. they've looked amazing. They've so been knocking it out of the park. That's when I feel good that, you know, like I took my time teaching it and we, and uh, the ladies are, that have been painting it, the folks that have been sharing it with me have been amazing. So, oh, it makes me feel good when I see that. Yes. All right. So we're going to go get some dinner, I think. So thanks for joining us. I, I still see some things in the sky that I want to touch up, but I'm not going to. Oh, you kept on picking up your brush that whole time you're talking. <laughs> I know. I really want to, but I'm not going to. I There's dark areas over here in the blue that I kind of want to touch up, but that's okay. I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to call it good. <laughs> we'll, we'll be done. It's okay. <laughs> I'll let you go, honey. <laughs> Three and a half hours is enough for now. But yeah, like I said, I could work on the out uh, the sky for another hour probably easily so <laughs> but that's what you do because people were talking about that earlier in the video real quick that you know you'll when you're doing these for commissions and things like that that you'll set it up in the living right. room yeah you'll look at it at different lights and right. different angles and things and see things and go back so right you know you don't have to sit down and paint a painting in one sitting no i very rarely do that it's mm -hmm. very we do this because it's odd. youtube right but normally i would not do that Mm -hmm. Darken up this area over here with a little glaze of blue. Okay, I'm going to stop. Done. Thanks, guys, for watching. We'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye.